What's up, YouTube? If you're anything like us, you were told once you have a baby, your traveling days are over. O-V-E-R. And if you're also anything like us, you were like, we'll see about that. 10 tips of traveling with a baby. Welcome to Abroad with the Burrells, a channel for travelers by travelers. I'm Coleman. I'm Jamie. We had our baby girl, Brooklyn, last year mm -hmm. in November. Since then, we've taken three trips before she even turned one. Three months, we took her to Hong Kong. At five months, we took her to Quebec. And at eight months, we traveled all around Italy. So we feel like we've gotten a lot of experience of traveling with an infant. And of course, we love to share that experience with you parents that are out there and looking to continue to travel. So we tried quite a few things. Some things worked, some things didn't. So just to make your traveling a little bit easier, we wanted to share this information with you. Tip number one, leave yourselves plenty of time. And I mean that in all aspects and in all phases of planning and the trip. Very important to do TSA pre when you can especially with a baby, because other than that, you're dealing with this kind of line. That's just a mess in there. And we pretty much just walked right in. We highly recommend that you book a later flight. If you book something 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and you have to wake up in the morning scrambling to go, we highly discourage that if you have a small baby. 11 a.m., noon, one o'clock, that way you have a chance to get up in the morning Get ready, make sure you have everything, make sure everything is inventory so that when you walk out of the door and go to the airport, you have plenty of time to do so and you're not dealing with the morning scramble. Make give plenty of time like your trip motto because you want to be able to take your time with everything. Everything is gonna take twice, three times, four times as long yes. to do. And depending on what age your baby is, you know, if your baby's drinking formula, you need to stop and feed her or him. You just wanna make sure that you plan out and you give yourselves a lot of time to enjoy what you're actually doing. Also, maybe a night flight will work great, especially if it's a long international. It gives your child a chance to sleep and kind of keeps them regular on the schedule. If your itinerary is usually jam-packed and you're used to jumping from location to location, slow down. Instead of doing three days in Paris and two days in London, Take five whole days in Paris just to enjoy yourself. For example, when we went to Hong Kong, we actually did 11 days there. It was perfect. It gave us just enough time to get everything ready for the baby. If she needed to sleep a little bit longer, we'd hang out in the hotel. Absolutely, and you have to remember that when you have a small child, sometimes when you're out and about and you're on a very tight schedule, the baby doesn't always agree with your timetable. So, on the top of the Duomo. <laughs> And uh, someone decided it was lunchtime. So that's that. She worked up quite the appetite she climbing is. all those stairs, Daddy. When baby's ready to eat, baby's ready to eat. When baby's ready to stop and cry and, and needs attention, that's just the way it goes. And so if you don't have a lot of room to maneuver, you can sacrifice some of the things that you really want to do or see. Also, in terms of giving yourself plenty of time, when we were in Italy, we went to three different locations and there were trains involved. You wanna make sure you're not running to catch a train, especially when you have nine pieces of luggage. Um, yes, we had nine pieces of luggage. Don't remind so, me. <laughs> um, You know, you just wanna make sure you're able to, if you are taking a train, get to the train station early to where you know exactly where you're going. You're not scrambling to do what you need to do. Yeah. It'll just make things so much smoother. Right. All right, so for tip number two, we recommend writing out a checklist and really planning what you need to pack for the baby. Make sure you have two different checklists, one for what to bring on the plane and what can be checked, whatever you don't need for just the plane ride. When you are packing for your baby, you're actually gonna have three different pieces of luggage, two for the airplane and one that can be checked. Well, let's talk about the airplane ride first. We have her regular diaper backpack that is like all of her immediate stuff she'll need. And then, thank you, and then, um, another type of just carry on with any extra stuff and I kind of counted this as my purse 
and I just shoved my actual purse in this with her other stuff. In her diaper bag, what her essentials are, okay? Diapers, wipes, uh, whatever ointment you use in case she needs that or he needs that. This is what Brooklyn uses as her pacifier. So those are her essentials including a change of clothes. Uh, we had a flight once when Brooklyn had a major blowout. It was all bad. And so I was so happy that we had a change of clothes. I'd say two or three bottles. The flight attendants are actually really good about either bringing you some ice to keep the bottles on or they'll even take it back and put it in the fridge for you. Depending on the age of your child, you want to make sure you have something for them to drink out of and also snacks. There were a lot of things she couldn't eat just because of her lack of teeth and so making sure that you're prepared with things you know she likes and things that she can actually eat because you don't know what's going to be on the airplane. Tylenol, okay. Um, she was teething during one of our flights and if we didn't have the Tylenol it would have been a nightmare. With the other bag, okay, um, something like a blanket, depending on your situation. Just something that you can lay her down with in case the airplane's a little chilly. I recommend bringing new books and toys that she's never seen before or he's never seen before. It's gonna hold their attention a lot longer than something that they've been playing with for a while. And then, you know, any snacks like this for her. Also, we tried things like the headphones. We bought one pair. We bought a second pair that came highly recommended. Did not work for our daughter. We also tried a sleeping mask, didn't work. She kept trying to rip it off her face. So options, can give it a shot to help them sleep better, but didn't work for us. Okay, so that's on the flight. We wanna make sure you have enough outfits for each day. Enough pajamas. We ended up having more clothes than we probably needed, but um, I was happy that we were prepared. The little things, right? A lighter sweater a lot more diapers. So one thing that I forgot that I really wish I would have brought was a bib. We would go out to eat and she's spilling food all over the place and getting it all over herself and then we'd be planning to go somewhere else. I wish we had brought this, but we didn't. So that will be in our next trip. Bathing necessities. She is used to sleeping with the white noise every night. Make sure you can recreate that wherever you go as well as her sleep sack that she sleeps with every night. Stroller, car seat, and also the chest harness. That you may want to bring on the plane as well. I know some babies, they like to fall asleep in that, so a parent may walk up and down the aisle with them in the harness and it can help them fall asleep easier. We really recommend packing a pack and play. Game changer. Oh man. Game changer. It was huge because you can call your hotel ahead of time and request that they put a crib in the room. However, those cribs are really hit and miss. Yes, we've um, had some great ones and we've had some some that just did not work at all. She just didn't take to them at all. No, and one crib, for example. It was like a Pinocchio crib. It was like made of all wood. And she kept hitting she her kept head She kept banging her head and against and the wood. And crying yeah. and it was like. It was a beautiful crib. It just wasn't very functional for a yeah. baby that age. Another bad crib experience we had was the mattress was so high that even if she was just sitting in the crib, she could fall out. Right. So you don't want to put all your faith into the crib that they're providing. This pack and play has been clutch. As you can see, it's soft and it's got plenty of cushion. It's large enough so that she can roll over in her sleep and not be too confined or bump into the edge and wake up. It just, it has everything. It's very, see how she just flipped over there and she had plenty of space. So she's comfortable because she feels like she's in her crib at home. So this was an essential for us traveling with her. And then of course, uh, one of the best aspects of it is that it's extremely compact. It folds up very easily and converts into a carrying case. So it's extremely portable when you're moving from spot to spot. So get one of these. If you're gonna be traveling with the baby, it helps immensely. Brooklyn was able to sleep her full 12, 13 hours yep. uninterrupted. Yes. We got up in the morning, ate breakfast, we were good to go. You wanna to try to recreate the home sleep environment as yep. best as possible. It'll just give everyone a great night's sleep so that you can start the next day exactly. fresh and rested and ready to go and explore. We 
kind of go back and forth in terms of an actual travel stroller versus a more heavy duty stroller. Yes. Couple quick tips about the travel stroller. It's lighter, it's easy to, easier to carry, easier to move around, quick, boom, boom, boom. However, there's not a lot of storage, storage. space on it. Um, Brooklyn could never fall asleep in it because, because it's it, more upright and yeah. able to recline fully. Right, and the canopy part of it right. didn't come out very far. Our heavy duty stroller though, the car seat attaches to it. Yes. So it was a lot easier to bring both pieces right. um, and not have to carry like a car seat and a travel stroller. Right. They just kind of clip right. in and you can go about your day. Plus, there's a lot more storage room yes. on the heavier, the heavy duty stroller. So as you're walking around, shopping, yes. you know, carry extra water, whatever. There's a large tray underneath mm -hmm. the bottom and you can store a lot of things and keep your hands free. Right. Also, it reclines fully and the canopy is much larger. So Brooklyn would have no problem falling asleep in it. Yes. The downside is that it is more heavy duty. It's right. heavier. You're kind of lugging this thing around. Right. But once you get to where you're going, it seems more practical to bring the heavier stroller is just right. more more benefits to it right. than cons. So you choose which one you like. I think we lean more towards the heavy duty. Yeah. Tip number three. Most airlines count the baby luggage as their own luggage. So if I get a free piece of checked luggage, he gets a free piece. The baby also gets a free piece of yes. checked luggage. They also will check a larger item for free as well, like a pack and play, a car seat, or a stroller. However, they only let you do one. So we recommend you check the pack and play for free because after you check the pack and play for free, you can gate check yes. the stroller slash car seat that connect before boarding time, go to your gate, They'll put a little tag on it and you're good to go. And it's nice to have the stroller and car seat as you're walking through the airport, airport. waiting for your flight. Right. Um, instead of having to hold her or him the whole time. Now, it, it's a little annoying going through security with it, right. but after you get through security, you're able to just push the baby around. So you've saved money and you've made it more convenient on yourself. Yes. Now we are saying all this based on the airlines we've flown with. It's always best to check your airline's specific requirements for you know checking luggage and so forth. Tip number four. If you have a small baby, we highly recommend requesting a bassinet ahead of time before you get on the flight. This was a game changer for us going to Hong Kong when she was three months old. Uh, she was small enough so the bassinet worked for her. It may not work if your baby is a little bit larger. When we request the bassinet, they requested a, what is it, a bulkhead seat, uh -huh. which gives plenty of leg room and there's some clips that they put the bassinet on and she slept in that thing wonderfully. The trip from San Francisco to Hong Kong was seamless for her. Yeah. I mean, she slept almost the entire time because of the effectiveness of the bassinet. If you can afford it, book a third seat for your baby. I know that airlines allow you to hold any child under two years old on your lap, but if you have a long flight, that quickly becomes cumbersome. And we highly recommend making sure that you have a third seat, both for a place that your child can sit and play and possibly lay out and sleep, but also for storage, because yeah. if you're bringing a lot of things we recommend it, it is gonna take up a lot of space and you're gonna need the extra space. If you forget anything, which you inevitably will, other countries have babies as well and they sell baby products as yeah. well. Don't kick yourself and don't panic. Just understand that if something gets forgotten or if you need something in emergency, there are plenty of places that serve babies just like our own country does. You're not going to some place unless you're going to some place <laughs> out in the bush, okay? You're going to a developed country, so don't feel so bad if you forget something. Tip number six. Be flexible. Yes. We've talked a lot about planning, giving yourself plenty of time, write out a list of everything you need, make sure you have everything, think ahead. Okay, realize that you are traveling, okay? Your baby is a human, they will be okay. They learn how to go with the flow. You might think, oh, my baby needs a nap. Oh, this is normal nap time. This is normal sleep time. The sleep schedule is gonna get all messed up. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might have one day where the sleep is funky. The next day, they adjust. We got to Venice. 
Brooklyn was really cranky that first morning because her sleep was all turned upside down. We went through the day, she got in the stroller, we started moving around, she took a nap, she woke up a different kid. They're not a little robot, they're human, and they adjust just like we do. I know I was really like, adamant about like she needs her naps but she totally adjusted and I have to remind myself like it doesn't always go according to plan but it's okay it all works out roll with the punches yes tip number seven go into it knowing it's gonna be work period no way around it you have your work cut out for you yeah it's gonna be trials it's just gonna be a lot this is what happens when you travel with the baby it's just a lot of pieces of luggage here baby car seat need that baby clothes diaper bag our luggage pack and play stroller piece all of it just equals a whole lot of hassle when you're trying to move from spot to spot it's a good workout it's probably the smallest set of stairs they've ventured today i don't know what we would do if we hadn't met him thank you jesus are there more? Yes. C'est mon ami Matt. C'est la dernière fois que je visite ici avec un bébé. Too many oh. stairs. But it is worth it when you do it. Yeah. Once you get out there and you get to your destination and you have your baby with you, it's very special. It's a very special uh, feeling, accomplishment, whatever you want to call it, to be able to travel the world with your child and not leave him at home. But just know that that does come with the price and you just have to ready your mind, prepare yourself and say, okay, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. Things are going to go a little bit slower. It's going to take a little bit longer. But once you sort of set your will and set your mind to understanding the work that's involved, you'll be ready to go and you'll be yeah. in the right place. If it does go bad or if something doesn't go the way you planned, try not to stress about it. Right. An article I read that helped me when we were planning our first trip, the article closed by saying, if your baby cries and screams the entire flight, just remember, you're never gonna see those people again. You're gonna have moments that might be tough, but me and Coleman will tell each other, it's temporary. You have some bumps, but like he said, the good definitely outweighs the bad. Yeah. And we're providing experiences for Brooklyn that she's not gonna remember right now, but by filming all this, she's mm -hmm. able to relive it in the right. future. Tip number nine, mental fortitude. Step up to the plate. Do not shy away from the challenge of it. Take your baby, go out there and you make it happen. Cause there will be challenges, there will be hurdles and obstacles. Work as a team to yeah. figure them out. And we had situations where, you know, we had to just lay the baby across the both of us, or we had to feed the baby from her tray. I'm feeding the baby from her tray while the baby's in my lap. And there's all types of things you'll be surprised at how creative that you you get in figuring these situations out. Multitasking. Wow, that's an impressive feat. Eating and feeding at the same time. Man, mommies really are superheroes, huh? With chopsticks. With chopsticks, too. <laughs> Got to throw it. And yeah. eating rice. There was even a time in Hong Kong where we were on the go and we were up at Victoria Peak and enjoying the sights. And of course, Brooklyn gets hungry and she's crying and fussy at the wrong time. And it's like, all right, let's grab that bottle. And there we go. And we <laughs> put the bottle together and put her in the harness. And there we are walking along with Brooklyn and Jamie's got the bottle in her mouth, feeding her on the go. And a lot of the tourists were remarking like, oh my gosh, look at you guys. You guys are just, nothing stopping you. It's great. You guys are working it out. And that's really what it's all about. Tip 10 is just remember that people are pretty kind yes. when they see you have a baby. We had a lot of situations where people would just let us go to the front of the line. Yeah. They would let us through the exit so that we didn't have to stand in yeah. line. But they make a lot of concessions for you when they see that you have a child. Yeah. We forgot something back in the hotel in our bag. We're like ugh, scrambling. Oh, don't worry about it. Just go on in, but don't tell anyone I left you in. You yeah. know, Brooklyn finished her bottle at the table in the restaurant we were at. The server took the bottle to the back to wash it up for us. Yeah. The majority of people, when they see that you have a baby with you, they wanna help you out. Right. So if you are struggling a little bit, 
they do what they can to help you. Everybody wants to be your friend. Yes. Oh, it's so cute. So we've got a chance to meet quite a few people and other couples with right. kids and make great international connections and friends who we keep in touch with to this day yeah. because of Brooklyn. So that'll do it for our tips and tricks of traveling with the baby. We hope that we were able to provide you with some information to make your trip a lot smoother and hopefully avoid some pitfalls um, that we dealt with. If you'd like to see any of our trips and videos, you'll find the links in our description. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Jamie does all of our photography work there. She does a fantastic awesome. job. If you have any additional tips to traveling with the baby, you'd like to share your experiences that you think will help other parents out or even help us out, please leave those in the comments section that will be huge for everyone we're all about giving back to the traveling community and your input is just as valuable as ours so from our family to yours we encourage you to get out there make it happen have fun and have fun see you Thank next you. time so that's it for our tips and trips uh, three <laughs> Two, one. This was a game changer for us going to Hawaii when she was three months old. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Three. <laughs> oh crap. Hawaii. <laughs> oh man. Maybe we need to go to Hawaii. <laughs>